We're here in Lebanon Hills Regional Park, and it's an amazing, beautiful place. And one of the most amazing things about this park is it's 30 minutes away from the cities. It's one of the largest campgrounds in the Twin Cities area. I love cooking outside. It is one of the most elemental things. You know, growing up, my mom and dad, they had a fire pit in the back of the house. When my dad set out to do a bonfire, it wasn't actually just a recreational thing. It was actually he was preparing dinner. So it would literally just be like a, a ring he had out there. We put logs down, we set, start the fire, and then you put a rack on top and we would start grilling. And a lot of that is so deep in the core of what I believe in and what, uh, how I've learned how to cook. So today's dish that we're making, it's very fun. We're gonna use swordfish. Swordfish, when you grill it right, or you cook it right, it actually has a pork texture to it. Uh, we use coastal seafood. They're a local fish vendor in town that we use, great friends of ours. For the tortilla, it's my uh, buddy, Chef Gustavo, and he makes these incredible tortillas from the Oaxaca area that he grew up in. Uh, his place is called Nixa. We're gonna take the swordfish, we're gonna put a um, dry rub on it, we're gonna grill it off, we're gonna make it into tacos. Now, so it's gonna be kind of a very uh, uh, heavily spiced swordfish. So to counter that, we're actually making this uh, char jalapeno slaw. So we're gonna do a slaw out of regular cabbage, purple cabbage, um, some relish, and uh, some jicama. One of the vessels that my father taught me how to cook on, especially with wood fire, is these clay pot grills. They're so easy to use, and they're so portable, they're lightweight, inexpensive. They are just a smaller version of these uh, ring fire uh, grills that you have down here. What we need first is to roast off some jalapenos. And you can totally do this with any kind of peppers you want. We want a little heat, so we're gonna do a jalapeno. I love that uh, smoky, char taste to it. So we got the fire hot and then we just took some jalapenos, threw in some um, salt, oil, and slowly on this hot fire, we just slowly roasting it off. A couple reasons why we roast it off here. When you roast it off, you actually mild down the heat of the jalapeno. And the other thing is you get this smoky flavor to it. And I really love that because when we mix that up with the sour cream to make that crema, to make that slaw, you really want to have all those balanced flavors. We're gonna start with our uh, white cabbage here. And what I do and I tell people is this, the easiest way uh, is you take your cabbage and you actually just make sure you square it so it doesn't move around and just take your knife and then just run your knife through. Put that right in there. You really wanna work that knife down to get those small string. And you get that, we throw that in there. And now with the radishes, um, you know, they roll around, so I always tell people, just take a little sliver off. And then you, what you do is you square the radish up. So what we'll do is we'll run our knife through our radishes, then run your knife through. The reason why I love using these cleaver knives are it's also, it's easier to pick up all your vegetable with. So we're gonna do some uh, shallots. Again, cut the shallots off here. our shallots in there. Uh, we have some cilantro we're gonna throw in. Now, cilantro, a lot of times people throw the stems away. I tell people to keep the stems. That's where all the flavors are. We're gonna start in the stems, and then we're gonna bring it up. So get those stems really small, and then once you get to the leaves, you can go a, bit, a little bit more rough cut. Or in the cooking world, we usually just call that rustic. Because if you say rustic, you can sell it for an extra $5. And then uh, for the jicama, it tastes like an apple and a pear had a baby with a potato. Then run your knife through, and you want to get sticks out of them. Throw a jicama in there. I'm going to throw in one clove. Or, uh, they're kind of small. We'll go two cloves of garlic. Take your lime. Roll your lime so all the juices comes out really fast. It's also you get maximize it. Lime in. And that lime is actually gonna really help cut through just the fattiness of the sour cream. 
And I tell people uh, when you're cooking, you always want to salt as you go. Uh, it's very important you do that. Um, as you add more ingredients, uh, the, the, the seasoning of the dish changes. So you always want to keep constantly trying to taste your food as you go. Okay. And then what we'll do is we got these jalapenos. So uh, the skin, we char the skin so it's easy. You can peel some of that char skin right off. I just take the jalapeno. We're going to cut it right down the middle. Um, run your knife right through. And throw that right all in there. I, I don't like my slaw super drenched in sauce. So we're gonna do two big teaspoons or tablespoons. And then again, we'll, we'll go from there. And then I'm just gonna, we're just gonna mix all this in. And then once that salt is gonna extract all the um, liquids and all the water from uh, the cabbage. So you, it's gonna get a little uh, thinner uh, as you let it rest. And then do a little tape. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's got kick in there. Okay, we're coming to the next part, putting the dry rub on the swordfish. I got these guys cut down a little bit here. And what we're gonna do is again, always start with their salt. So we're gonna have a salt, flip it to the other side, salt both sides. I take a little bit of just neutral oil, any kind of neutral oil, and just put a little oil on it because when you, I understand this is a dry rub, but once you put the rub on, you, you need something for it to stick in, onto the, the meat. So, and then the dry rub here is um, paprika, granulated garlic, cumin, coriander. And then again, on the other side, same thing. So we let that sit uh, for about an hour or two, and then we throw that on the grill. of swordfish is almost like pork. So just think like if you were cooking pork chops. So the way this grill works is since the heat is so close to the bottom, it's a, I, I tell people it's a very interactive kind of grill. So if you're the person grilling, you're really focused. So notice how the outside of the fish is uh, not cooked as well just because the heat is all towards the center. So I'm constantly rotating and turning uh, the swordfish. It's also great if you're an introvert and you don't want to talk to people, you could totally work around this grill so nobody bothers you. We are just about ready. So when you're cooking big pieces of meat like this, take off the, the meat and you let it rest. And remember, there's residual heat that's in the meat that's cooking. So as you let it rest, that residual heat will still keep cooking it. So it's very important that you do that. The meat actually starting to fall apart here. So we're just going to take off these beautiful steaks. We're done. We're gonna put everything together. I'm gonna finish these guys off here. I don't wanna burn them. Okay, and then we're just gonna take our swordfish. Beautiful. Take your swordfish, you're gonna just cut them up. You know, some of them are breaking up. Just, we're gonna cut up some of our swordfish here. We're gonna throw them right in the middle. You dust it with a little bit of the seasoning so just to get the extra extra flavor in there. Take the slaw, get your friends together, have everyone come around, everyone grab a tortilla, grab some uh, swordfish, throw some slaw on top, squeeze some lime, start eating. 